Guidance counselors play a vital role in supporting individuals as they navigate critical personal, academic and career decisions. To fulfill this responsibility effectively, counselors must adhere to the highest standards of professional ethics. These ethics, overseen by confidentiality, impartiality, and a commitment to the client's best interests, are supposed to ensure that their guidance is trustworthy and effective, and upholding these principles is not just a matter of professional obligation, but also a moral imperative to respect and protect the dignity of every individual. However, with the capacity to generate systematic instability, when guidance counselors fail to uphold ethical standards, it can lead to catastrophic consequences, not just for their clients, but the broader public. A breach of confidentiality, for instance, pushing misleading or biased advice, can completely derail a client's life, inflicting profound emotional harm and irreparable damage. Spreading the fallout even further, this is also true if reckless advice has the capacity to victimize unsuspecting third parties, creating a further invisible ripple effect of harm. Indeed, when such advice carries significant consequences, it can obliterate years of hard work, drain resources, and extinguish potential, leaving victims' lives in devastating disarray. Thus, the ripple effect of unethical behavior in guidance counseling can extend far beyond individual cases, tearing through families, destabilizing institutions, and undermining the entire fabric of communities. Ultimately, the failure to uphold professional ethics by guidance counselors jeopardizes the very purpose of their work, and that being, to help individuals achieve their fullest potential and navigate life's challenges with confidence and clarity. Emphasizing the worth of peer counselors, I can identify one such case, a stark reminder of why it is absolutely imperative for the public to, when seeking guidance in their most vulnerable moments, locate a counselor who rigidly adheres to the highest ethical standards. Indeed, anything less can even have the potential to put lives at risk, as did the case I can report on now. A matter of legal record, in 2012, litigation commenced in Brampton, Ontario against the Morno Sheppel guidance counselor Catherine Heyman, who was based in Austin, Texas, and who was licensed by the Texas State Board. I commenced the action because unprovoked, and concealed by confidentiality, Heyman unethically committed to a defamation sniper attack on my character that left a trail of devastation. Indeed, Heyman's defamation was so recklessly unprofessional, she nearly got me killed on two separate occasions. But the fallout didn't stop there. Her malicious covert assault tore my family apart and left me utterly ruined and the catastrophic chain of events still haunt me today. The ultimate heartbreak, I have a 13-year-old granddaughter who I've never met or spoken to, and all a devastating consequence of Heyman's malpractice. You see having to represent myself in court, another financial consequence of Heyman's malpractice, Sheppel's corporate lawyers won the case, but this outcome was also achieved as a direct result of deception by Sheppel's case lawyers. The fact is, it can be legally said, the Morno Sheppel lawyers involved in this case, Roslyn Cogan and Pamela Meals, entirely fabricated Sheppel's defense factum. The fact that I have been publicly making this claim for years and have not been sued for making false allegations makes the lawyer's legal position perfectly clear. Like Catherine Heyman, they are also guilty of malpractice. Let's just identify this case for being what it is, an illegal injustice of epic proportions. At this point, you might assume that to win the case, Catherine Heyman must have presented some compelling evidence to sway the Ontario Brampton Court judge, Justice Bealby, in favour of Sheppel's defence. However, the reality is quite the opposite. Catherine Heyman did not attend court to give any evidence, nor did she provide any written testimony supporting any of Sheppel's fabricated factum statements, and nor is she on record disputing my claim. She unethically committed libel against me. But here's the truly remarkable bit. Sheppel's factum didn't name Catherine Heyman, let alone name her to be defended. So astonishingly, for all intents and legal purposes, regardless of the fact Catherine Heyman played absolutely no part in the proceedings whatsoever, an uninvolved, unrepresented individual, effectively still won Sheppel's case. As a result, Justice Bealby now stands on legal record having made unsupportable ethical judgments, entirely devoid of material facts pertinent to anyone in Sheppel's factum, but all these years later, to protect its lawyers, the Ontario legal industry will still not address the illegality of this case. An outrageous deception by Sheppel lawyers, none of this information was able to be put before the Brampton Court at the time of the hearing, 
And to reveal these facts, it took an international private investigation, both here in Ontario, Canada, and Austin, Texas. In 2014, an ethical inquiry by the Texas State Board into Catherine Heyman's malpractice confirmed that the Brampton Court's judgment was legally unsupportable. However, due to Heyman standing with the board, the inquiry demonstrated a striking leniency towards her, not typically extended to other counselors who are on state board disciplinary record, committing less severe ethical violations. Although the board did not take any formal action against her, it advised Heyman to adhere to and comply with all board rules, specifically, code of ethics. Clearly, if Heyman had already been in compliance, the board would have had no legal basis to issue any such ethical criticism. This example all goes far beyond mere negligence. It is a devastating betrayal of ethical standards by multiple individuals who unquestionably should know better. At its core, however, lies the reckless actions of Catherine Heyman, an irresponsible counsellor who blatantly disregarded ethical code, showing utter indifference to the catastrophic consequences her misconduct would inflict on an unsuspecting third party. And this is the very reason why members of the public should make sure that they are receiving ethically sound counselling, because not to do so could introduce and escalate bigger problems requiring to be addressed than existed in the first place. But realistically, could this unethical nightmare happen to you? Well, able to be identified deeply unqualified is exactly what still makes Catherine Heyman actively dangerous to society, but she will not be alone. With her license to practice not being revoked by the Texas State Board, Catherine Heyman has had over a decade during which time she could have easily engaged in further unethical conduct, once again, concealed by confidentiality and left undiscovered, a result of nobody commissioning a private investigation looking into her conduct. The disturbing reality to be assessed must be, concerning Heyman and her unethical ilk, how many other people might she and others have harmed because of unethical behavior? Fact is, with a serious lack of accountability clearly posing an ongoing risk to public safety, there is no assurance that Heyman hasn't repeated the same misconduct with potentially devastating consequences for even more unsuspecting individuals. So yes, we have to accept that it's only prudent to question the ethical integrity of all industries that use confidentiality, because the alternative is, you might not find out there is an issue, until it's all too late. With so much professional integrity now questionable in society, common sense dictates, like most things, it's better to be safe than sorry, and check out who you are dealing with. I hope you have found this information interesting and thought-provoking, but until next time, see ya!